Hi guys. So here's the footage from National Geographic of a swimming feather star. And I was kind of fascinated with this, uh, the bend it does for each stroke, each arm. And it was actually the bend I was the most interested in trying to replicate in Houdini setting this up. So let's take a look how I did that. So I'm going to start out with just a line and I'm going to use a trick which I used a couple of times. First I'm going to use a sine wave on a transform to get this motion. And I'm going to use the same sine wave with a slight offset in a bend. And when I combine these two, I will have the foundation to this kind of flat motion, wing motion, right? It's a great trick. In this case, I also wanted to have the wave the building wave that can drag up the arm of the crinoid. So I have this idea to use a sine wave and I'm just going to use it on point number two and I'm going to just add a little offset on it. So the sine wave is just going to move this point from 1.75 to minus 0.25. And it's, it's really exaggerated, but I actually smooth this because this is the movement I want. So when I combine this with the bend and the transform, this is what I get. I just add a resample, and I'm going to use the subdivision curves. And that's close enough for this purpose anyway. So the next step, I'm just going to use a time shift. I just did a, uh, an offset of a second, and then I looped uh, the 60, uh, 60 frames. Now I want to create the, the shape of the arm. I'm just going to create a line, which I'm going to copy to each point. And this is what I'm going to end up with. Then I'm going to use the the P scale. And when I when I did the resample up here, uh, I, I ticked uh, to create the U attribute. And the U attribute means uh, you're going to have a value of 0 on point 0, and you're going to have a value of 1 on the last point. And uh, all the points in between is going to have a fade of these values. So you can use that in a ramp. So I'm going to say the P scale is going to be a ramp where I um, remap the uh, curve view. And the remap is going to give me that shape. So this is what I get out. And then I just pump that into a skin. And then I'm just going to uh, add the normals to the vertices. So. Uh, this is our basis for the, for the arm. And with that, we are going to start building the structure of the creature. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to use the circle. And I'm just going to use a four segment with circle. And I'm going to use a small trick. If you have something at the center of the world and you set the normals to the position, you're just, just going to have normals out from the center. And when I use that and copy points, it's, it's going to uh, align the arms as I want them. So this is kind of like one layer of the arms. And now we kind of get into the tricky part. I want to have a cluster of these arms and I want to have them offset in rotation and in time. And you could, of course, create like time shifts and merge them and uh, do it that way. But I'm going to use a for loop. And this is kind of tricky because time shifts don't work inside for loops. You have to merge them in. So if I would take this structure and I would pipe it into the beginning of the for loop, 
and I would use the merge CC duration here. And that would be how you would do it normally. But if you're going to use the time shift, you have to feed back the iteration. And then you have to merge them in each step. So I'm going to have four iterations. And on each, I'm going to merge in these. And the time shift is, I'm, I'm st I can still use the metadata from this for loop. And the metadata is going to give me a detail attribute with uh, which iteration I'm on. So that is, I can use that in, in the offset for the frame. So I'm going to take uh, the detail of the metadata, the iteration, and I'll take it times 12. So on uh, zero, I'm going to get zero. On one, I'm going to get 12, so on. So this, together with the transform, which is going to rotate a uh, 67 and a half degree, I'm just going to scale it down a bit and add a little bit to the Y on uh, each iteration. But this is going to give me my final result. So yeah cool setup and it's a proof of concept and uh, well let's move on to something else